What's going on guys? One of the biggest questions I get asked is, where do I start if I wanna build an AR platform? And I always answer with, well, what do you wanna do with it? What are your expectations? What's your area of operation? How are you gonna be training with it? And when we can answer these questions, all right, then we can have some type of grounds to start building a good platform that we're really gonna be happy with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over one of my platforms. Um, you probably see me shoot with this one more than any other one, simply based on the fact this is what I travel with. Um, hopefully this is gonna give you a better idea and open your mind on how to think when you're gonna um, build a new platform. All right, to start off with, I had to ask the exact same questions. What are my expectations? What are my goals? And I came up with two answers. The first one is I wanted it to be light as possible. Reason being is because I travel so much. Next is when I do train, I can train four to five days straight on the range, eight to 12 hour days. Um, temperatures can be freezing all the way up to 110. So I wanna be as light as possible overall. Um, not only in training, but operationally speaking as well. Uh, the next one was I wanted it to be fast. Why? Why not? All right. So the faster I am, the more effective I am in a gunfight. All right. So as you can see, this is a pistol and I'll explain why I chose that as well as we talk about it. Right. We'll start back here. This is the SB4 Tactical Brace. Um, I don't get any kickbacks. I've purchased everything on this platform. So if I tell you I feel something's a good product, there's a reason behind it. All right, it's definitely lasted through my training, okay? Um, definitely a good brace to have. So when we're talking about barrel links, you'll get a lot of opinions, a lot of experience. Um, again, I'm gonna, I base all mine on what do I need? All right, and what can I do with that uh, setup? All right, scientifically, we can prove that a 16 inch barrel is a little more accurate and it delivers more energy downrange in a 10 and a half. All right, so I've taken this gun out to 500 yards effectively, okay? 300 yards, upper torso, round after round, like it was nothing, okay? 500 yards, a little more focus. Um, so my next question is, am I trying to shoot through glass? Am I trying to shoot through car doors? Or am I just trying to put rounds on a soft target such as a human body and incapacitate? All right, and because of that, all right, that's why I chose 10 and a half. All right, one of the main reasons, all right. <clears throat> So for my BCG, I've got a skeletonized nickel-plated BCG, which ties into the adjustable gas block and the reduced weighted recoil spring, which helps quite a bit as far as the overall recoil. I don't recall what um, brand this muzzle brake is. I'll, I'll look into it. But from my studies, it was always fell into like the number one our number two slot and reviews out of like 10 to 20. So it's really good, um, works really well, and I like it a lot, all right? The trigger. All right, this particular trigger is a Timney Comp. I'm not big on competition triggers. How I ended up with this is my trigger broke on the way to California. Um, I had to stop in Arizona. This was the only one that they had that I really liked. So this is a result of that. Um, it's a little too light for a combative trigger, but it also falls back into, I wanted a fast platform. So it does add to that. All right, on my safety. All right, ambidextrous short throw or 45 degree safety. This little gadget here is called a bad lever, battery assist device. All right, I like it because as a left-handed shooter, all right, it's very easy to manipulate and it doesn't take a lot of pressure for me to release it. Right. 
From the right side, I can activate it as well. I change the magazine, my thumb activates it, releases a bolt, chambers around. All right, works really good for uh, left-handed shooters, okay? <clears throat> my primary optic. I did not intend to continue to run this optic. I purchased this a couple years ago when I purchased a omnidirectional bipolymer AR, $399 out of the box. All right, and the whole concept of that was I was gonna do a video and hit targets out to 500 yards and show people, look, it's great to purchase and invest money into a good platform, but you should be able to take any platform, all right, and study the ballistics fairly quickly and impact at any yardage that the uh, platform is capable of. All right, and what people don't realize is most of it is the incapabilities of the shooter, all right? The reason why we can't do what we want to do is not because of the gun. I don't care what name brand it is, all right? It's the shooter behind the gun every single time. So it doesn't matter what equipment you have. If you don't train, you're not going to be effective. You might look cool, but when it comes to performance, you're going to suck. All right, and that's what you don't want to do. So put the training in, put the time in. Um, so this is a Vortex Spark AR. It's a $200 optic. Um, so if you're looking for a really good optic on a budget, I would recommend this. It's lasted through some brutal training. I've literally cleared and safe, thrown this gun, I can't tell you how many times just to get it dirty and it's still holding up, okay? <clears throat> For my backup sights, I'm running Magpul, Embus flip-ups. You're gonna see a lot of options here. You're gonna see a fixed front sight. You're gonna see a mounted micro red dot on the primary. You could see uh, iron front and rear 45 degree offset sights. You could also see a 45 degree bracket with a micro red dot. And I'm not gonna tell you what's faster or what's better. Um, here's what I'm gonna tell you. As a, from an operational perspective, a real operational perspective, we wanna keep our gear as streamlined as possible. Okay, all of this stuff works really well when you're running from one cone to the other, but when you have to start crawling and rolling and climbing over walls and slinging your platform all of this stuff is going to make sense and you're going to be wishing that you had another system okay so my hands are already in this position all right i'm engaging the primary goes down all i have to do flip up the front sight which is co-witness to the optic and i'm going to use the glass in the optic as a rear aperture um, it's a really good way to do it. I can effectively acquire targets and engage out to a couple hundred yards fairly quick with this setup. If that's something you would like to try at some point, I'll give you one more tip. As you can see, the glass window is fairly small, so you have a small field of view. It's going to be easier to align the sights up. If you have a larger glass, larger field of view, such as, as with an EOTech or something of that nature, I find beyond 75 to 100 yards, I have a hard time acquiring targets fast, okay? I can acquire them, but I'm looking at speed when we're uh, talking about a gunfight, okay? So that's one of the reasons why I like this particular optic as well. <clears throat> Charging handle. This is a Radian Raptor, ambidextrous. I would highly recommend you getting an ambidextrous charging handle. So no matter what position you're in or your platform is in, I can manipulate it without having to worry about going just to one particular side, okay? Lights. I'm not gonna get into lights. I'm doing another video that's gonna go over a lot of topics on lights and it's gonna help you um, have a better, um, 
just kind of a better mindset on how to pick a light and what you're trying to achieve. But this particular one is a TLR1 HL 1000 lumens with a pressure switch on top, okay? That's pretty much it for this particular setup. Actually, I take that back. I forgot my favorite thing here. All right, I recently put this on. This is by Law Tactical, which allows your stalker brace to collapse. All right, and the reason why I chose this is because, again, this is a pistol in the state of Texas. I can actually carry it in my bolt bag on my back, locked and loaded, and if something were to happen, it acts as a CCW, okay? This is not my primary platform, okay? I still carry a holstered pistol, but I think we could all agree if I could get to this, I have a better chance of survival and I have a better chance of protecting others as well. And that's my overall goal. It's really easy to activate, lock it, chamber, and you're ready to rock and roll. All right. So I hope you guys like the video. Please subscribe, like, comment, and share. Have a great day and God bless.